Hey, uh, this is Eugene, and we are here today with Chad and Mike. And today we're going to record another episode of live contract reviews. Today's contract is Ref Finance. Uh, this is an exchange contract this, that extends on top of Uniswap and also aligns with the near asynchronous ecosystem to solve certain problems that arrive when you have asynchronous transactions. So let's jump into this. It's currently deployed on a mainnet, uh, but it doesn't have a UI. You can only interact it with this with CLI so far. And it's open source. And you can see um, and play this is. So to start, we're starting with Lip. I just updated Cargo Tomal to the latest third version of Neo SDK. And this is the commit from current master. So some stuff might not work as expected, but hopefully we can resolve this quickly. So Lip, uh, we set up small lock, uh, via lock using a macro. And this is a main contract structure using panic on default. All right, so we have an owner ID, the account of the owner of this exchange that has a extra method to call exchange fee is a fee that exchange keeps uh, to itself, a referral fee that is given if someone is trading using a custom front end. So the front end author can keep a small fee by passing their own refer a referral to, to every trade action or every swap action. And then pool is a list of pools. Um, I'll go into this. Deposited amounts is the account to account deposit. And we'll talk about this. And whitelisted tokens is a list of token IDs, a contract IDs that are allowed to, to be exchanged in this contract. First, what is a pool? The pool is an enumerator. So it's a generic pool wrapper that can be implemented in multiple ways. So, so far it only has one implementation which is called simple pool, which is uh, a pair of tokens similar to Uniswap that exchanges. Uh, and it currently has max number of tokens equal to, we'll go into simple pool later. So pools may have different implementations in the future and there can be multiple different types of pools. They are in vectors, which means once they add it, they cannot be removed, uh, which is interesting, but probably a safer way. I prefer to use a lookup map now for instead of vector because vector doesn't have ability to delete, uh, but sometimes it's uh, preferred to use a vector. So deposited amounts is account ID to uh, deposit. And what the scenario does that apply? Sorry, that's for, uh, that's like a UI that, that comes through on the UI, right? Like once a pool is set up between two tokens, it can't be deleted or is this for like contract implementation? Um, well, no, no. So let's say in the future, we have some legacy pools that we don't need anymore. Then we cannot really remove them from storage, uh, remove the ability to interact with them because they are in vector. So it'd be between like banana tokens and wrapped. No, it's more like, uh, let's say the simple pool has a bug or something like this. So if you want to disable all simple pool issues, 
uh, they will be in the vector forever because we cannot have empty slots in the vector. Okay, so it is, it's like a contract upgradeability consideration, not uh, like what people yeah. see when yeah. they use the app. I, I guess, I, I don't know. So account deposits is information per account. So we have a native amount. So this is used for storage right now of this given account. And um, and there has we also have tokens, which is a hash map from a contract ID to a balance. And what's interesting is account is can have different tokens from the master contract. So this is somewhat was unexpected, but we can see later how that works. Because I would think what's the point of store an account or if store a token that's not um, that's not cannot be traded because it's not whitelisted, but maybe you can't even add this, then then you can use an index. Um, but maybe you delist the token and then you can only withdraw it. So I don't know. Anyway, so it's a hash map, not an ordered map. So you can have only a limited number of tokens on your account at a given time, which is another choice. Unclear why you want to have it this way, but maybe to be efficient in a number of swaps, you want to have it this way, but can be probably re-implemented later to, to be an ordered map. Uh, minimum account deposit length is is 16 plus 4. So this is account ID plus balance. And that's a storage for, for I guess, for depositing uh, into exchange. Let's go back for now here. So when you initialize a contract, you give prefixes and set up exchange. Um, and owner ID. So, um, you can use into, at least in this case, because you don't need a valid uh, account ID. Now, a payable method to add a simple pool. This can be called uh, by anyone, apparently. Let's see. And you need to pay for the storage. So you, you create a simple pool uh, that is indexed at the length of the pools, the token we check that there is no token duplicates. Okay. We set a fee equal to fee that you pass plus the exchange fee plus the referral fee and you pass exchange fee and a referral fee. I mean, okay. So the fee is measured in percentages or basis points, I think. So for example, 30 is 30 basis points. Now we have, uh, let's look at the add internal pool. So what it does, we remember the storage before adding to the pool. Uh, ID, we already got the ID in a pool. So we don't really need this ID. And we check what's the difference in storage multiplied by using nth byte cost, which is already updated. And 
Do we make sure that there's enough storage? Then we generate a refund and we transfer it to predecessor and return the ID. Cool. Okay. Um, simple new. Let's see what happens when we create a simple pool. So total fee should be less than fee divisor, which is 100%. And total of the exchange should be less than total fee. Then number of accounts should not be one, but also number of accounts should be less than maximum number of tokens or equal. And then we convert it into a vector of accounts then amounts, volumes, swap volumes. What is swap volume? Because um, input and output for every token we have input and output. Okay. These shares, um, Right, so, so we create a unique prefix for, for this. I was thinking to, to make an example eventually, it's uh, out of scope for this contract of how you manage storage. So I see pattern where we had to use a unique prefix and we come up with this idea. So like, oh, let's use S here, or let's use, uh, something else there. And uh, then you need to remember what uh, prefixes you already used. For example, here you use P, D, and W. You need to make sure you didn't use S in the past. So I was thinking, so I'll suggest it to use um, kind of unique ID for for creating a prefix. My current thinking for this is should be something like you do uh, state key, and then you may have something like pool, or like pools, deposited amounts. My CPU is going wild. I don't know what's going on. Slow. One second, I'll quickly check what's going on. At this C line, so maybe it's just been weird. So you have whitelisted tokens. And then you have, now we need a unique prefix for simple pool. You do something like ID. And what you need to do next is just to put Borsch serialize on it. And that's it. So now when you use a prefix here, you can use state key um, colon colon pools, try to vec on wrap. That's it. So you just created a key that is unique for this particular uh, vector. Now for simple pool, you would do something like this. You will create a simple pool and you pass ID and you do the same. You, you just do try to vec, it created a unique prefix for a simple 
pool. And this is, you reuse it across entire contracts, so it's guaranteed to not repeat itself because enumeration starts from like zero, then it go one, two, three, and then the ID gonna be unique with this, within this. And Cool, H how long of a prefix would that be? Uh, this is one byte. So, wow. And this is gonna be five bytes. So it's exactly the same as, like, except. Cool. So it's also efficient, like it's binary. Plus you cannot like mess it up with um, near margin. So what you need to be careful is, um, is near binge and default key. So default key is state. So if you have a prefix that starts with capital S, uh, then you can have a conflict if it's like four characters after this, this state. Um, so what is, Evgeny Kapun suggested, he suggested that default key should be this. It should be nothing. So it's basically empty key will be a state of the contract. And that you cannot have a conflict because well, empty key you, you wouldn't create. Cool. Anyway, this was a bit off to to talk about like how to better manage state keys, prefixes. Okay, we finish it. Maybe we didn't finish simple pool. I think we did, yes. So shares is a liquidity provider balances. Okay, swap, and you can pass a referral ID. So this is the account ID that will get a referral fee, which is, can be your front end, where you get a referral ID. So when you pass a swap, if you pass a referral ID, then you will get an extra one fee. Um, I wonder what happens if you don't pass a referral ID. So let's say I'm doing my own swap from the command line and I don't pass it. Will I actually pay more to the exchange or something like this? Anyway, it requires one Yoctanir getting the sender ID as a predecessor. It takes a list of actions. So vector of actions and vector, the action is, is it takes a pool then you say which contract you're swapping or like which token from fungible token you're swapping from uh, how much near you want to put if none it will take amount out from the previous step and will fail if amount is none in the first step so you kind of can create a chain of swaps to like arb the pool itself and like keep the money so you can rebalance the pool if you have a circular dependency there. Or you can like swap one token to another through a set of pools uh, by paying ton of commission, obviously. Token in, token out is another account ID. And the minimum amount out is how much you wanna get from the swap. This is how you define slippage. All right, so let's see what happens. The previous amount is none. Then we're gonna go through the list of actions and, and so that's interesting because my, I don't know if you, you probably see that it's optional string. Even so as ref returns you account ID, 
but after a clone account ID becomes a string. So I wonder if you can just do into, well, now it figured out that this is an account ID. Even so it doesn't matter in this case. Maybe it will not figure out what is the into I'm doing into because um, actually now it knows. Okay, um, so first action should be, should have the amount in, but the next action doesn't need to. Then we do in a swap that returns a previous amount. It kinda, gonna fail if list of actions is empty. It's gonna try to unwrap here and this will panic, which is good. So at least we covered that, that corner case. So we call internal swap pull in token in amount in talking out, mean amount out, sender ID and a referral. Why, why clone referral here? Well, you can just this, ah, not gonna change it during the review, but I can put a note. Okay, let's actually see what is internal swap. Internal swap deposits. We get the deposits of the sender ID and wrap a default. I mean, if account doesn't exist, we can just panic. Um, Amount in so we have sub sub takes account ID which it doesn't really need a reference to. I need it here, I see. So we need a token. We check that the value is higher and then we subtract the value and reinsert the token as a hash map. Maybe that's supposed to assume that the, it's not a hash map or what's the particular reason of doing it this way? Because you can do, you can do self tokens entry Then you say token, and then you can do. I actually don't know. There's probably a method, something like oh, yeah, you can do n modify and pass a function. So it's going to be value and you can say value plus equal um, oh. well you need to check but you can do check well yeah you need to like do this kind of logic here so you need to do this then you do 
minus equal to amount. And, and modify returns you self. Occupy to vacant. Um, and then you can say, uh, this whole entries thing we're doing, this is for hash map, right? Can, can we do the same thing for rest collections that we have currently? Near? It would be cool, right? Yeah, that would be we, we very cool. Support it, but it would be cool to have something like this. How you actually, you, you what you want to do is you want to enforce that this is occupied. So there should be something like a method like expect or something. I cannot find it. I need to look into this later. So if you go here and then go to entry, um, It does have an insert this, but I wonder how you actually enforce it. There should be some like matches occupied entry or something, whatever. Uh, we can figure it out later, but anyway, I think I have wrote this uh, first to make sure it, it looks like an order it map and you can use it as an order it map or like a lookup map per account. And this way you can have more tokens and this is gonna work. So you need to reinsert it correctly. Um, Going back where we were into deposit. So we remove the amount. Is there any uh, reason for amount in to take a capital U128 here? In internal swap? Yeah. Yeah, doesn't, doesn't have to be. It can be a small, so you don't need these conversions. Pool and um, you get a pool by index, and then you execute swap in a pool, which is a generic implementation that will do account or like pool specific action. Then you add a deposit on amount out for the token that you get. Um, kind of didn't check that the amount in is different from amount out or token in different from token out. Then you insert your deposits back for the given sender, replace the pool. Right, because it's a vector. And return the amount. So let's see what's going on in a swap. So a simple pool called simple swap. And what we do, we get token index, token in, token out, internal get return. We still haven't checked that the tokens are different. Token index is iterating on a pool on a VIC and just gives you. What would the, is there an exploit I can do by swapping like Banana it probably banana. checks it somewhere. What, what would happen if they were the same? Seems like I would just burn gas fees and get no benefit. No, it can be like overflow somewhere here. So like you can mess it up somewhere. Eternal get return. 
So it returns you the value that you should get. Oh yeah, it checks it here, so. So you out of luck. Amount in multiplied by fee, multiplied by out balance, divide by fee by in balance plus amount this fee. What's going on here? What is amount in an imbalance? Oh, that's a balance of the pool. It's total balance of the pool. Fee minus total fee. It's probably like a Uniswap formula that like optimize this commission like fees into the calculations. Out balance. Then, right. Yeah, it's probably just uh, Uniswap. So this at least one. Okay, anyway, so you calculated how much you would get out for the given amount that you put in out after the fees. And then we check that you, you should get at least this amount. Just a small note that we should probably put the end vlog after yeah. that assert. Right. Yeah, it's interesting because I'm not sure how Ethereum does this, but like, let's say a transaction was reverted and we throw a bunch of logs. Did we? Did we log? We do log, but like question is like, is it considered to be real or not? Anyway, so mean amount, previous. Like if someone is indexing and reads that log. What is the invariant here? integer square root. So we multiply this by that. Right, is this, what is that? And then, and then we did the swap and we verified the invariant, that new invariant has to be higher. Okay, why we need a, a secure T? Is this like the, the pool has to have over collateral or over liquidity or something? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm just kind of guessing. Shares total supply. That's a numerator. It's how much fees you got in square root by total supply. And then it, if it's more, then we'll start giving fees away. And we minted shares to exchange, right? We give some shares to as a liquidity to exchange. Then we give shares to referral. But it doesn't check for the storage when you give liquidity to referral. So you can abuse it through referral by like having unregistered referrals spamming in and that will create a ton of storage as minting shares to referrals. So you, when you do mint shares, you need to make sure that this account that you add in shares to is already pre-registered.
so like somewhere earlier in this stack, if I provide an, a referral that is not yet registered, throw an error. Yeah. And we need to maybe charge it somewhere on the referral account. So this has to do some storage management that was not done. So this needs more explicit storage management on the account level. Is it uh, min equals max storage management like fungible token? No, or... no, no, it needs to be flexible because you can have liquidity on every pool and you supposed to in theory have multiple tokens. So right now they're charged from the account balance. Anyway. Um... We mean the shares total fee divided by referral fee. What? Oh, that's a denominator. So numerator is how many shares we give and divided by new invariant and total fee and multiplied by referral fee. Okay, got it. Cool. Ah, uh, yeah, that should be fine. Okay, let's see. Quickly check mint shares. So if shares zero, we don't give any shares. Otherwise, we mint new supply and we get the go into collection. to add uh, to previous value plus value on a given key and reinsert this to the lookup map. So this kind of entry that we were talking about. Let's also quickly check integer square root. So we add plus one divided by two And then we use Newton method, I guess. Divide by two until guess is less than the rest. Wait. Oh, right. Yeah, until it's like conversion. Okay, I think it works. Uh, right, more, more back. And then we update uh, volume of in token in and out. That kind of strange to me. Shouldn't we update out, out, put? Uh, out, uh, yes, seems like it. In because index it's a, input and in index output. Volume of mean? the of the given the output of a given token. Yeah, I think it should be like this. Let's um, try to do. It's so slow for me. We can. Where is is it the volume of the volume of the liquidity in there? Uh, so this is just for statistics, like how much it was swapped. That's how I probably. Oh, okay. It. 
I, I'm not quite sure this is a correct way of minting fees, but probably Ilya checked this mess before, so this makes sense to to do. Because you didn't mint more shares to the existing shareholders, but you diluted the sh shareholders. And you haven't used the denomin, you haven't used the the total percentage. So you divide it by total fee, but what you should have divided is you, you, it, it's missing, it missing fee denominator. So if fee like total fee is 30 and exchange fee, let's say is five. Then this one is, let's say we minted one. Let's say the numerator is one. The new invariant, let's say is one. New, in, uh, new invariant is, let's say 10,000, like maybe it's, hundred to one, so we minted like 1% in uh, in during the swap. Oh, maybe it's here. Yeah, there's a fee divisor. Yeah, I see. Okay. Allowing to provide fee in what's BPS stand for in this case? Uh, basis points. So it's like one set, one hundredth of a percent. But then, yeah, so numerator already reflects. Uh, the feed, so, so it's already took 0.03, let's say, or like whatever percent out. So, so it did increase by some amount <coughs> still. This is, all right. Maybe there's a, some formula that's explained somewhere in the mass, but it seems plausible that this works. Okay, let's go back to the original. So once you've done a swap, you get amount out. And you updated all amounts and And you finished swap. So now adding liquidity and removing liquidity. Um, we don't have much time. So adding liquidity, you need a, one Yocta. A predecessor is and you we get a pool, we get deposits for the given account, we get tokens. We remove deposits. Uh, what is this? Let's see, iterator. Okay. Um, So we remove deposits from your account for the given tokens. 
and then we say we add in this liquidity and we save your deposits and we save this pool okay let's see add liquidity pool add liquidity so it should match shares if pool is initialized to fair supply okay we go through all tokens make sure you add in non-zero liquidity of every token and then uh the fair liquidity gonna be this amount multiplied by number of shares total supply and divided by this amount and it calculates a minimum now we multiply it by this to calculate how many what we uh, increment the amounts our oh, internal amounts by the amount you added a little hard to follow i think comments would go a long way i also don't pretend to know how this all works this is but you don't also refund the amounts that's a little off so we charge the full amount but we didn't refund the full amount so if you over attach to the amount, we, we will like take it from you and keep it, but give you little liquidity. So the, the amount's gonna be consumed, like they, they're gonna be lost, but not even consumed. You, you mean- so, so this is amount in, so this is amounts in, and this is, uh, self dot amounts is the amount of the given pool. So there's two tokens, but that's fine. Um, we calculate how much, sh how many shares you should get as a minimum of every amount that you add. But then we only add this amounts to the pool based on the minimum amount you provided. So we, this amount of token we used, what we didn't do is like, say you provided ton of token one and only one token two. Well, we only used like both of them by one. Now ton of token ones are lost. So this method should not only return the fair supply, it should also um, take all the amounts you provided and refund them back to your account. So this is what we don't do. So basically you should refund, or maybe you just do this, right? You, you can do, mute amounts and then you do amounts i minus equal amount as u64 and here you say amounts i equals to zero so this is what you need to do and then you need to say uh here's shares and amounts you need to return or you can take it by reference it's even better now 
Now, in the the one that called it also has to oh too too far too close also should take a mute and here we give Mute amount, and then we need to do a reverse. I guess not here, but. So this would be fair because we'll return the tokens that we didn't took. What is global? Oh, never mind. It'd be really interesting to dive into the balancer contracts. I know that like what I, I've added liquidity to balancer and you can add like basically like the exact amounts, you know, like if it's 50, 50 and you can say like, okay, I have exactly 50 like wrapped ETH and then like 50 die or something like that. Or if you have less of one, then it does some kind of magic to make it work. But I think it's like a different call and, and you'll have much more slippage. It missing miss min shares. And min shares should be. Because right now you can be front run pretty badly um, on this this action. Okay, uh, we're out of time, but let's quickly go through remove liquidity and see what's going on here. So remove liquidity again gets the amount same way, except for minimum amounts. Pull, replace, pull. Um, yeah, that 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 actually is safer method because well. because you provide this mean amount for every amount you want to get. So you get shares, amount, this, this is how you're getting, how much you're getting. So it should be higher than mean amount and we remove it from the pool and push the result. When, if it was all shares, we also remove the you from the list otherwise we say how many shares left on your account we decrease the amount of shares and return you a vector of uh, amounts that you've got okay this is good and then you get the amounts we just reinsert it back to you um, and that's it so we we store your account cool uh overall i think we mostly covered the basic logic here i can quickly look what's also there storage management um it kind of does something so i don't know we don't need to dive into this And it probably ignores force, which is okay. Token receiver. So this one ignores the message. Or like it, it expects the message to be empty. I would prefer if the message would say deposit instead of being empty. Then internal deposit, it adds tokens. 
and it um, so yeah when you deposit the token it has to be whitelisted in this case in theory we can map it from being a count id to to be an index because we have a list of whitelisted tokens so we can save a lot of bytes by just having use 32 index of tokens that are accepted by the account by the exchange utils some utils we use so this view calls that just gives you a bunch of data like pagination. So this, this is so common, I feel like having a range would be beneficial. P, full volumes. You mean in SDKRS? Yeah. In for vector and like an ordered map. And a bunch of calls. I think view methods are not that critical to look right now, but yeah, overall, I think, yeah, we, we haven't found anything critical except for liquidities can be from trend. So when you add a liquidity, you were not guaranteed to, to get enough shares and also not guaranteed to, to get a refund on your amount. So if you see a transaction in a pool and you can front run it as a validator, you can basically send a swap transaction in front of it. Then the liquidity will be minted at like very unfavorable conditions and you like swap it back in the next transaction. And that way you, you pretty much took entire amount. Well, not really, but you can take large amount because they will get one share for losing all amounts. The problem is these amounts are gonna be lost because they are not, not really going anywhere, not going to the pool. Okay. Um, I think that's it for the contract today. So thanks everybody. Bye.